Hey, what's up? It's Carmen Chloe of singlemarriedwidow.com. And my question for you today on surviving widowhood is, how do you deal with the shock of becoming a widow? I'll say it again. How do you deal with the shock of becoming a widow? So for those of you who don't know my story, you can go back a couple of videos and I go in detail about how I actually became a widow. Um, and for those of you who are just tuning in, I will briefly explain to you how I got inducted into this sisterhood that I never asked to be a part of. Again, my name is Carmen Chloe of singlemarriedwidow.com. I am a widowed mother of two little girls. I became a widow on December 18th, um, December 16th, excuse me, 2018. And my husband left behind myself and my two beautiful daughters. And um, widowhood is not, it's not, something that you could ever prepare for or embrace or just be okay with is something that you know god forbid it happens to you and you have to figure out how to live life after death you have to figure out your whole entire life again depending on um what happened after the death or what happened before you have other things that you have to deal with so um in discovering that there's not a lot of communities and support groups and a lot of information about how exactly you walk out this journey of being a widow, I decided to um, create a community called Single Married Widow so that I could just express myself and kind of document my journey and hopefully in turn help other widows, young widows, new widows, widows with children to kind of walk this journey because everybody can tell you how they feel or tell you it's going to be okay or tell you about how they felt when their mom or their dad died, but it's not the same as losing a husband. And even amongst us widows, is still not the same because I actually know, um, I think it's like four or five other recent widows that I was connected to um, via social media that actually lost their husbands. Um, one lost her husband on the same exact day as mine and we both turned um, 39 years old this year, which is so odd, like the similarities between us. Um, her husband was young in his early 40s, like my husband. And then I know other um, widows who were some of the same widows who were sending their condolences condolences and praying for me and my daughters who recently became widows. So um, it's not something to where you need to pity somebody because you just never know where this life is going to take you or what's going to happen because I'm pretty sure that the recent widows that I know, they never thought in a million years that as they were praying for me and sending their condolences for me, I'm pretty sure they didn't imagine that just a few short weeks later that they would be widowed as well. So I find that um, you can find comfort sometimes amongst other widows that get it. People that don't get it, they just don't understand. And sometimes they say things that are silly, that are insensitive, and it just doesn't help the situation. So I just want to give some tips on how do you deal with the shock of becoming a widow? Because it's definitely a shock. And it's definitely something where, you know, you go through the five or seven stages of grief, whatever they are. I don't, I don't know that I necessarily believe in them um, all the way, but you go through different cycles of grief where you're just in disbelief. And even me, almost four months later, I still am kind of like in the twilight zone. And I'll say like, oh my God, I can't believe you left me. Like just talking out loud to my husband as if he can hear me. Like, I can't believe you left us. I can't believe you left us like this. So I don't know that the shock goes away. I think you just kind of deal with it. But um, I just came up with five quick tips on how you can uh, deal with the shock of becoming a widow. And chances are, if you're watching this with uh, this video, you um, are a widow, a recent widow, a young widow, or a widow with children. So I just want to give you some tips. There's nothing that anybody can say, even myself being another widow, that can ease your pain, that can take away um, just the great sense of loss and the great sense of feeling like you just got cheated. <laughs> It's like a feeling that you feel like you just got cheated. And I'm going to try not to cry today. You, you never know when the tears are going to flow. But um, I just want to give you five tips on how do you deal with the shock of becoming a widow. So number one is to breathe. Don't forget to breathe. When I initially found out that um, 
my husband had passed away when I went to the hospital um, and I was walking being ushered into the room with the chat the hospital chaplain and the nurse and the doctor and all of that like I knew before they said it but I didn't want to hear it and it was this moment in time where it was like everything stood still and I couldn't breathe for a moment. It was like I couldn't breathe. I had to remind myself to breathe. I started getting hot. I started taking off my clothes. I started punching the walls. I fell on the floor and I'll find myself sometimes kind of gasping or holding my breath because I don't know what to do next. I don't know what's next for me and my children. I don't know if I'm making this decision correctly because it's a decision that I normally would make with him and he's not here or it's a decision that he would normally make for us. So I just want to remind you as I remind myself to breathe don't forget to breathe don't forget to breathe don't forget to breathe because although it hurts like hell we're still here we still have breath in our lungs and we have to remember to breathe tip number two is to have faith okay everybody has different levels of faith uh People believe in different gods. Some people don't believe in gods, but in God. But I truly believe that my faith and how much I built up my faith uh, prior to my husband passing has definitely kept me throughout this journey. Okay. And as I said, everybody has a different faith, a different God. I personally believe in the holy God of Israel, the holy trinity. Um, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus the Son. Okay. Um, I stand on the word of God. I study the word of God. I declare the word of God. I've seen the word of God, um, alive and active in my life. And, um, and I'm not even going to get into all of that, but that God was speaking to me before my husband passed away about some things, about some things. So, my faith has really carried me through and I encourage you, um, if you are a person of faith, to just stand on your faith because that's what it's there for. We can profess our faith. We can say we believe in God. We can quote scripture and make declarations, but these are the times when your faith is truly tested and you really have to stand on what you believe. These are the times when things happen that are devastating, when things happen that knock the wind out of your body, when things happen and the people who have saw you stand on the word of God and declare the word of God are looking at you to see, is she going to denounce her faith? Is she going to say that she doesn't believe in God anymore? Is she going to be mad at God? Um, and I can't say that I was mad at God because I got different premonitions um, about my husband's death and I tried to pray against it, but that's an entirely different video. But I can't say that I was mad at God. I was just confused because I felt like I didn't do enough or I did something wrong. And then I questioned like, God, was that you that gave me the premonitions and the visions and the dreams? Was that the enemy? Like, what was that? So I can't say that I was I was angry at God, just, just a bit confused and, you know, wanting some answers. And I've not yet gotten the answers. Um, and I've been told that I'm not ready for the answers because I then I would be angry at God. So um, everything, everything in his timing, but definitely number two, have faith. Number three is support system. Make sure you have some type of support system. I know a lot of people um, who say, you know, they had no support system. Their friends left them. Their family left them. Their in-laws um, kind of turned on them during their time of bereavement and trying to figure things out. But um, there are plenty of different avenues that you can go to for support, okay? If you don't have friends, if you don't have family that you can lean on and talk to and vent to and be completely honest to, um, I, I encourage you to find some groups. I'm, I'm a part of some groups on social media that definitely helped me in those beginning stages because it was a group of people that got it. It was a group of people that got it. It was a group of people that got the immense sadness. It was a group of people that got the anger. It was a group of people that got the frustration. It was a group of people that got um, the wanting to lash out at different people because they were irritating you and they didn't understand and they were being insensitive. So by all means, if you don't have any type of like formal uh, support that you can go to at your church or from your family and your friends, definitely connect um, with some social media groups that specialize in the loss of a 
spouse or grief or being widowed. Uh, also therapy. I encourage you to try some therapy. I myself need to reschedule and get back on track with my therapy. I've had three therapy sessions thus far and it's been almost four months. So I need to get back, back on track with that. So I encourage you to go through some um, therapy or um, connect with some grief groups. I think they're called Grief Share. I think it's griefshare.org where you can find a local church in your area and you can go to their groups. And if you're not a person who believes in God, if you're not a person who believes in the Trinity and the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, I don't believe at the Grief Share groups that they like shove it down your throat. I think it's really based around like grief and helping you to get through your process. Tip number four is take it one moment at a time. People love to say, people who have no idea, they love to say, oh, just take it one day at a time. Taking it one day at a time is too much, okay? You guys saw how in the beginning of the video, I almost broke down and started crying, which is, is totally fine. But it's just it just goes to show that each moment can be different. I'm encouraged right now. I'm empowered right now. I'm ministering to you all right now. And I'm sharing um, my tips and my story right now. But in the next moment, I may be crying. In the next moment, I may be angry. In the next moment, I may be frustrated. In the next moment, I may be confused. So my advice to you is to take it one moment at a time. Don't, don't let anybody tell you to take it a day at a time because that's too much, okay? things can change from one moment to the next okay as I said um, I became a widow on December 16 2018 at 7 21 a.m. so from 7 20 a.m. to 7 21 a.m. there was a drastic change so you can't take it one day at a time you have to take it one moment at a time and then tip number five um, in terms of how do you deal with the shock of becoming a widow is journaling. I encourage you to journal. Get a journal. Write out your feelings. Write out your emotions. Write out your fears. Write out your questions to God about why this happened and could you have done anything differently and, and what to do next, okay? Get a journal. Write out your feelings because there are going to be some things that you may not want to share with your therapist or your group share, group share, share uh, grief share group or your church or your or cousin or your mom some things that nobody will understand but God so I encourage you to get a journal as well so those are my five tips for how do you deal with the shock of becoming a widow again I am Carmen Chloe of singlemarriedwidow.com if you're watching this video if you are a new widow um, a young widow or a widow with children I want to invite you to join my community for widows at singlemarriedwidow.com Com. And don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on surviving widowhood. Thanks guys. Peace.